Hello everyone, welcome to my year in gaming awards for the year 2022. This video is all about celebrating my year in gaming and giving away super real awards that definitely actually exist. If you want to see mine and the crew's full game of the year discussions, make sure to check out the latest episode of the podcast. I have 17 awards to give away, so let's get started. First up is Replay of the Year. This goes to the game that I had the most fun replaying this year. It should be noted that replayed games are eligible for this award only. The nominees are Sly 2 Band of Thieves, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Dragon Age Inquisition, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and Fallout 4. The winner is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Replaying this game reminded me how much ass it kicks. One of the best RPG combat systems out there make for some of the best and most satisfying boss fights in gaming. One of my favorite games of all time, and this replay only emphasized why that is. The next award is called the Oldie But Goodie. This goes to my favorite game that came out before 2022, but that I played for the first time in 2022. The nominees are Xenoblade Chronicles, Final Fantasy VII, Years of War II, Inside, and The Pathless. The winner is Xenoblade Chronicles. I dove head deep into the Xenoblade Chronicles series this year, and the first game was outstanding. The world building, environments, and story blew me away as I fell in love with the game almost immediately. The next award is called the Dumb Fun Award. This goes to the game that was just plain old fun. Might not have done anything mind blowing or memorable, but the gameplay or in some cases the writing was just plain old fun. The nominees are High on Life, Strangers of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins, Man Eater, Vampire Survivors, and Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. The winner is Man Eater. Play as a shark and go around eating people and other sea creatures. It's stupid and the writing is plain silly, but damn if it wasn't fun to just fuck around and eat a beach full of people as you flop around like an idiot. The next award is Multiplayer Fun. This goes to the multiplayer game that I had the most fun playing this year. The nominees are Ember, Fall Guys, TMNT, Shredder's Revenge, Grounded, and Deep Rock Galactic. The winner is Deep Rock Galactic, Rock and Stone enough said. The next award is Indie Darling. This goes to my favorite indie game that I played in 2022. The nominees are Vampire Survivors, Tinykin, Citizen Sleeper, Stray, and Inside. The winner is Tinykin. This instantly became one of my favorite 3D platformers. The level design is packed with creativity and the game just exudes charm. One of my favorite games this year, period. Next award is The Stinker. This goes to the unfortunate game that was my least favorite to play this year. These games aren't all necessarily terrible because, hey, at least I finished them. The nominees are A Memoir Blue, Crisis Core, Somerville, Spirit of the North, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The winner, or loser in this case, is A Memoir Blue. This game was short, but not very sweet. There is little to no actual gameplay, and what's there is not very interesting. The story is touching, but nothing unique, and it's been done better a hundred times over. The next award is the Side Hustle Award. This goes to the game with the best side content. The nominees are God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Pentiment, and Citizen Sleeper. The winner is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. The sheer amount of side content in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was overwhelming at times, but there's a reason I would find myself consumed by the side content for hours upon hours while there was something important in the main story to do. The reason being the side content is filled with great characters and interesting stories that help flesh out the world of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Best Writing is the next award. This goes to the game with the best writing, whether it be hours of side content or a main story that invokes all sorts of emotions. The nominees are God of War, Ragnarok, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Opus Echo of Starsong, Pentiment, and Citizen Sleeper. The winner is Citizen Sleeper. A game in which I had to read all the dialogue was able to invoke so many emotions for me, and it's not because the voice in my head is an amazing voice actor. There were times of happiness, of despair, and of bitter sweetness in this very short experience. The next award is the Certified Banger Soundtrack of the Year. This is one of the most prestigious awards I would be giving out, and it goes to the game with the best soundtrack. The nominees are Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Final Fantasy VII, the original, God of War Ragnarok, Rainbow Billy, and The Curse of the Leviathan and Stray. The winner is the iconic soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII. I'd be hard pressed to find a game out there with more tracks that slap as hard as the tracks in Final Fantasy VII. From One Winged Angel to Aerith's theme to the iconic main theme, not a single song 
misses. The next award is the PETA Won't Like This Award. This goes to the best game where I played as an animal in 2022. The nominees are Tunic, Fae, Stray, Maneater, and Spirit of the North. The winner is Stray. Stray was an absolute delight to play, and so many subtle touches made you truly feel like a cat. Plus, the post-apocalyptic world is really interesting, and the soundtrack is boppy. The Earth Day Award is up next. This goes to the game with the most visually interesting environments. The nominees are God of War Ragnarok, Gears of War 2, Horizon Forbidden West, Xenoblade Chronicles, and Inside. The winner is Xenoblade Chronicles. This game is chock full of awesome and creative environments for Magna Forest to Aerith Sea. I was blown away every time I stepped into a new environment. The environmental design in Xenoblade Chronicles is one of the main reasons I think it will always be a memorable gaming experience. The next award is Gameplay It's in the Game Award. This goes to the game that has the best, funnest, tightest gameplay. The nominees are Gears of War 3, God of War Ragnarok, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, The Pathless, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. The winner is God of War Ragnarok. As good as the story and writing is in Ragnarok, I think the gameplay does a lot of heavy lifting because it kicks so much ass. The Leviathan Axe is as satisfying as ever, but I don't want to spoil anything, but a weapon you get partway through the game was even more satisfying and helped flesh out the combat even more. Being able to switch between all three weapons truly makes you feel like a god. The next award is Artistic Direction. This goes to the most visually striking game that I played in 2022. The nominees are Inside, Pentiment, Horizon Forbidden West, Rainbow Billy, and The Curse of the Le Leviathan, Chicory, A Colorful Tale. The winner is Pentiment. The storybook art style is so unique in gaming, and this game hits it out of the park. Plus, all the different font work for different characters speaking is such a nice touch. Just a wonderful game to look at. The next award is Level Design. This goes to the game with the most interesting and memorable level design. The nominees are Tinykin, The Pedestrian, A Plague Tale Innocence, Inside, Kirby, and The Forgotten Land. The winner is Tinykin. I'm a sucker for being small in human environments, and Tinykin knocked it out of the park with each and every room in the house. I'll be thinking about the level design in this game pretty much every time I play a 3D platformer going forward. Next award is Character of the Year. This essentially goes to the game character that I am the biggest simp for. The nominees are Kratos from God of War, Amicia from Plague Tale, Yuffie in Final Fantasy VII, Ashira in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Ida in Opus Echo of Starsong. The winner by a country mile is Ashira in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Ashira is crazy and pretty much has a death wish, which is quite unique in a game where everyone else is like, whoa, what the fuck, why we gotta die after 10 years? She also has a unique backstory, which I will of course not spoil here. I love my badass suicidal warrior. Now we have come to the penultimate award of the video, the in-game moment award. This goes to my favorite singular moment in a video game in 2022. I will do my best to describe these without spoilers. The nominees are the fist bump. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, The Blob from Inside. This nominee has been spoiler tagged for giving away one of the final moments of God of War Ragnarok, entering the toy room in Tinykin, and Aerith's death in Final Fantasy VII. It's been over 25 years, I'm not skirting around that one. The winner is entering the toy room in Tinykin. My reaction to this was actually on stream, and when I say I was pumped, I mean I was pumped. I slowly came to the realization that I was standing on what was essentially a Hot Wheels track that leads into the toy room, and I lost my mind. It was beautiful, just a tiny little fella amongst a world of toys. I could only point to a few singular moments in games that have evoked such pure joy. And the final award of the day is of course the game of the year and no before you ask i did not play elden ring so this goes to my favorite 2022 game the nominees are citizen sleeper god of war ragnarok kirby and the forgotten land tinykin xenoblade chronicles 3 the winner is god of war ragnarok i loved every game on this list and there are some things that the others do better than ragnarok but ragnarok is the complete Package. It has satisfying gameplay, compelling storytelling, a banger of a score, A plus visuals, and more. It exceeded all my expectations. And since Christopher Judge spent enough time talking about it, I will stop right there. Just know that God of War Ragnarok was my favorite game in a year where I loved a lot of the new games. 
Well, that's it. I had a wonderful year in gaming in 2022. I hope you did too. Let me know your favorite games of 2022 in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.